Hello and welcome to the video on derivatives. Derivatives are an important tool in calculus that allows us to measure the slope of a function at any given point. We can also characterize the derivative as the instantaneous rate of change of the function at the given point. This will be discussed in detail in later lessons. We can recall that the slope of a line is given by the equation y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. This equation will be called upon later when deriving the definition of the derivative. Before proceeding, we must define the tangent line. The tangent line is a special line that just touches a curve at a given point. Here we have an example of a tangent line. Here we have the graph of the function f of x equals minus x squared plus 3 with the tangent line at the point 1 comma 2. Next, we will show how to actually find the tangent line. Okay, so consider this graph, and let's also consider two points on the graph. Let's label them P and Q. Furthermore, let us consider the line that connects P and Q. Now, let's say we are interested in the tangent line to this graph at the point P. That is the blue point right there. Well, in order to do this, we simply consider the line, as we did, between the points P and Q, and now we let Q get closer and closer to P. So with the slider here, I'm going to let Q get a little bit closer to P. That will give us something like this. All right, so now we still have a line between P and Q, which is closer to our desired tangent line, but it's not quite there. Let's let Q get a little bit closer. Okay, and let's just get it right to P, and there we go. So now we actually do, in fact, have the tangent line, that is this red line, to the graph at the point P. Let us consider another graphical example of the tangent line. So once again, we have a graph. This is the graph of the function x squared plus 2. And let's say we're interested in the tangent line at the blue point P. Once again, we consider two points on the graph, P and Q, and we connect the line through them. And if we want to get the tangent line at the point P, we simply let the point Q get closer and closer to the point P. So graphically, this will look like something like this. Get closer and closer. The tangent line's getting better and better. And then once we actually hit P, there we go. That is the tangent line. So we see here this is some sort of limiting process, right? So we're definitely going to need the concept of a limit. This will be shown next. Okay, so let's assume that this is our curve. This is the graph of the function y equals x squared. And let's say that we would like to find the slope of the curve, or the derivative, at the point x comma f of x. This is denoted right here. So first, we construct the line that passes through the point of interest, x comma f of x, as well as a secondary point that we will label x plus h comma f of x plus h. Okay. In this case, h is just some arbitrary number so that the point x plus h comma f of x plus h is some arbitrary distance away from our original point, but still on the curve. So here is our point of interest, and here is the secondary point x plus h comma f of x plus h. Now, let's call upon the fact that the slope of this constructed line will be f of x plus h minus f of x over x plus h minus x. Keep in mind, this is simply our normal slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 in disguise. Instead of using y2, we're using f of x plus h. Instead of y1, we're using f of x. Instead of x2, we're using x plus h. And finally, instead of x1, we're using x. <clears throat> After canceling out these x's in the denominator, the slope formula turns into this expression, f of x plus h minus f of x over h. We see that this will give us a rough approximation of the slope of the desired tangent line. Okay, so what happens if we make our h value smaller? 
This implies that the second point will now be closer to our point of interest. Remember, h is some arbitrary number that is some distance away from our x value. This gives us x plus h. So basically, if we make h smaller, this implies that we're adding a smaller number to x, which will make x plus h smaller as well. As a result, the point x plus h comma f of x plus h will now be closer to our point of interest while still remaining on the curve. So this is denoted in the picture below. See, we have our point of interest and the point x plus h, but h is smaller now, so it's closer to our point of interest. All right, so let's let h get even smaller. So we see here that as h gets smaller and smaller, our secondary point gets closer and closer to our point of interest. The effect of this is that the approximation of the slope of the tangent line, this line right here, gets better and better. We can actually find the exact slope of the tangent line by taking a limit as h approaches 0. So let's just do a quick recap here. Let's go back to our constructed line. The points that it passed through were x comma f of x and x plus h comma f of x plus h. Recall the formula for the slope of this constructed line will be f of x plus h minus f of x over h. If we take the limit as h approaches 0 of this expression, we will find the exact slope of the tangent line at the point x comma f of x. This is also known as the derivative. So we now arrive at the limit definition of the derivative. It's the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And let us consider our first example of computing a derivative using the definition. Let's say we're interested in finding the derivative of the function f of x equals 3x plus 4. So here we have the definition of the derivative. The term f of x plus h in the definition means wherever we see an x in the original function, we plug in x plus h for it. And whenever we see f of x, we simply plug in the function itself. So after plugging the function f of x equals 3x plus 4 into the definition, we obtain this limit. The limit as h goes to 0 of 3 times the quantity of x plus h plus 4 minus the quantity of 3x plus 4 all over h. Now we can do some algebraic simplifications. We can distribute a 3 into the first term and a minus sign into the last term. That will give us this limit right here. Now we see that we can cancel out the three x's and we can also cancel out the four. So canceling out those like terms in the numerator will give us the limit as h goes to zero of three h over h. And now we can of course cancel out the h's from the numerator and denominator and our limit becomes the limit as h goes to zero of three and the limit of a constant is always equal to the constant. Thus, the derivative is equal to 3. Let's do another example. Let's find the derivative of the function f of x equals 4x squared plus 2. After plugging this function in to the definition of the derivative, we obtain this limit right here. The limit as h goes to 0 of 4 times x plus h squared plus 2 minus 4x squared plus 2 all over h. Now we can algebraically simplify this. So the first step would be to square the x plus h and also distribute a minus sign into the last term. That will give us this limit right here. Next we can distribute this 4 into the first term and that will give us this limit. And now we can cancel out some like terms in the numerator. Namely, we can cancel out 4x squared and we can also cancel out the 2's. So after doing this cancellation, we're left with the limit as h goes to 0 of 8xh plus 4h squared all over h. Now we make a note. We cannot evaluate this limit yet because if we plug in 0 for h, we get 0 over 0 which is indeterminate form. 
So that tells us that some more work is needed. Okay, but we notice that we can factor an h out from the numerator. After doing this, we obtain the limit as h goes to 0 of h times 8x plus 4h all over h. Next, we cancel out the h's in the numerator and denominator. We get the limit as h goes to 0 of 8x plus 4h, and now we can safely plug in 0 for h, which will leave us with 8x. Thus, the derivative is equal to 8x. Let's consider a slightly trickier example. Let's say we want to find the derivative of the function f of x equals 1 over x. So the first step is to plug this function into the definition of the derivative. That will give us this limit right here, the limit as h goes to 0 of 1 over x plus h minus 1 over x all over h. The next step would be to actually subtract those fractions that are in the numerator. We can do this by creating a common denominator of x times x plus h. And after doing this subtraction, we get this limit. And now we can do some cancellations. We can cancel out the x's in the numerator, and we can also distribute this x in the denominator. After doing that, we get the limit as h goes to 0 of minus h over x squared plus hx over h. And now we can divide these two fractions. So we would do minus h over x squared plus hx times 1 over h, because when you divide fractions, you multiply by the reciprocal of the second function. So after dividing those two fractions, we get this limit here, the limit as h goes to 0 of minus h over h times x squared plus hx. And now we can cancel out those h's in the numerator and denominator, which leaves us a minus 1 in the numerator. And finally, we can plug in 0 for h, and that will give us minus 1 over x squared. Thus, the derivative of 1 over x is minus 1 over x squared. Let us do one final example. Let's find the derivative of f of x equals the square root of 1 plus x. After plugging this function into the definition, we get this limit right here. The limit as h goes to 0 of the square root of 1 plus x plus h minus the square root of 1 plus x all over h. To deal with a limit of this sort, it is always useful to multiply by the conjugate of the numerator. So we multiply the top and bottom by the numerator, except we change this minus sign to a plus sign. Now, the multiplication here is a little messy, but after sorting through all of it, we get this fraction right here. And now we can cancel out some like terms. Namely, we can cancel out the x and minus x and the 1 and minus 1. And we also notice that we did not distribute this h here in the denominator. We simply just wrote the terms next to each other. You'll see why. So after canceling out those terms in the numerator, we end up with this limit right here. The limit as h goes to 0 of h all over h times the square root of 1 plus x plus h plus the square root of 1 plus x. Now we can cancel out those h's in the numerator and denominator. That will leave us with this right here. And now we are in a situation where we can safely plug in 0 for h. And after doing that, we end up with 1 over the square root of 1 plus x plus the square root of 1 plus x. These are of course like terms and we can simplify it to 1 over 2 times the square root of 1 plus x. And we are done. That is our derivative.